Hey there everybody, Professor Steve here. And so the last topic we're going to cover, cover for this unit, <clears throat> and and really for the content of the whole course actually, um, uh, um, is addressing sort of how do we manage our fisheries. So so I sort of painted kind of a gloomy picture of how, how humans interact with, interact with the ocean, um, how they harvest the biological resources in in the fisheries and how this can be both detrimental to to um, single species populations but also to the food web and the food chain um, and the fact of the matter is that um, that uh, over the last half decade or so I should say a half century or so um, we've we've made great leaps and bounds in both the science and and the practice of fisheries uh, so that we can start to sort of still have this resource which is one that humans have have used and, and needed since the dawn of of humanity but um, but we can use it in a, in a way that's sustainable um, and what we mean by sustainable is use it in a way where we don't deplete the resource or destroy the resource but in a way that it recuperates that it can sustain itself um, um, at a good level while while we are still using it, and then, so 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 this is a practice. Sustainable yield is actually a practice. So how can we engage in fishing? How how can we have a fishery um, at some level or with some target, some kind of regulation, um, so that 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 particular fishery can sustain itself? But then we also have ways of of, of doing some remediation to some of the fisheries that have done a lot of damage or and some of the practices that come from remediation uh, sort of go a long way towards 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 sustainable yield in in, uh, in other fisheries or ones that haven't been damaged yet and uh, so the, the main the main thing that I want to go over and this will be pretty brief from here on out uh, is something called the logistics curve so one of the main things in in practicing st uh, sustainability in, in any in any field or with any biologics is understanding uh, the, pi the, bo the the physiology, the growth dynamics of both the individual and the population of any given organism or species. So if you understand these things, then you can make predictions about um, how much of of that resource is there, how it grows, and then like which part of that population or types of that species and how much of it can you harvest um, while letting that population replenish itself. And one of the ways that we do that is by studying the logistics curve of of an organism, of a species, um, or of a group of organisms or species. And essentially a logistics curve is basically just studying natural dynamics of the population over time. So if I take a single organism, it could be a bacteria, but it could be a fish um, population. If we take that single species, um, it, in, in an ecosystem, in the environment, every species or organism has a base number of organisms in their population. And we call that standing stock. And we mentioned this briefly with, uh, basically with uh, zooplankton and, and more importantly phytoplankton. So, so that, no that starting number that we have. And now if we feed that, that organism or that population, if we give it what it needs to, 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 to live and grow and reproduce, the, in an optimal way, give it whatever it needs to grow optimally, which means at full capacity, that population will grow. So the population grows, and it grows at a certain rate over time. Um, there is some point that that population will reach such a high number um, that it can't grow anymore, right? It usually runs out of some sort of resource. It uses all of its nutrients, it uses, it eats all of its prey, it runs out of space to live and grow, and populations tend to naturally control themselves that way. So in, in a very natural way, a population will grow at a, at a very specific rate over time and will reach some kind of maximum, what we call carrying capacity for that, for that um, population. And so if you know these, these three components, um, 
Now I mark off half carrying capacity, um, which is essentially the half carrying capacity is half the maximum population is right here. And usually if you can measure the rate right here, so the tangent line of this slope essentially, of this point right here, you know what the maximum growth rate of that population is. So if you know these three variables, the standing stock, um, the maximum growth rate, and what the maximum population size is, the maximum carry capacity of that population is, then you have three powerful, very, very powerful um, statistics, mathematically speaking, and you can plug them into all kinds of models and and mathematical equations and sort of back calculate um, and make predictions about these kinds of of variables right here. And so the idea of sustainable yield is to use these, this knowledge when you study a population um, to make predictions of how, so you use um, the, the variables from a logistics curve, um, anything known or known, known data or collect data about the, the population versus size statistics, like that, the, the curve that we went over. Um, in the the, fish, the fisheries life cycle lesson, um, you use that to track. Uh, you use that combined with the 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 mortality um, plot, right? The death probability with age, and now you have essentially all the population dynamics you need to go on to a fisheries um, and generate a fisheries curve that's sustainable. So the ideal thing would be to target the direct the, the, the correct or the best and optimal size fish um, regulate the size of the size and type or I should say the size and age um, and how many of that size and age are caught so that they target the right place in the in the in the life cycle of that fish and then then as long as you regulate how much of them and which one and which age range which physiological type you you're catching, then you should fall right in the in a in a sort of a sweet spot in in the fisheries curve, um, and and you never reach this part where you crash. And as a matter of fact, if you're doing this right, the the end, the ideal end result, the ideal goal, is to re is to reach a sustainable catch. So that is to say that if you catch if this is if this is how many fish you catch when you get it right, this number of fish. Right, whatever that number be, 200 million tons a year or something like that, then you can maintain that 200 million, or by backing off, um, changing your net size, changing your hook size, um, so that you are catching um, a particular size and age fish in that population, then you can maintain that 200 million tons a year, and you can maintain it all year long. And meanwhile, in the background, the fish are continually reproducing and replenishing themselves so that you never have this big boom and catch and then crash of that population. And so that's a sustainable yield or a sustainable catch where you can catch the same same number or same amount of fish um, for the entire life of that fishery without actually crashing the population. And that essentially is the, is the main idea of, of this and sustainable yield. <coughs> Um, a good a good case study for this is this is the Atlantic striped bass um, very large uh, fishery both um, commercially and uh, and locally so we have local fishermen um, regular anglers plus plus fishing party type boats that rely on this um, both for recreation but also for their livelihoods but then there's also a very large industrial and commercial fishery for striped bass because striped bass is a is a is a, a good game fish and is a good food source and sells really well at market so um, the striped bass leading up into the the 1980s were fished um, basically um, to a crashing point on our fisheries curve, right? So to to write about here, not to the point where it was completely unrecoverable, to about here. And then we started employing regulations based on this sort of schematic and dynamic. And really, the this is a, a great success story because once we started um, uh, 
you know, we determined what a threshold was, like um, where where the the amount of catch should be. We determined what the optimal target catch kind of thing would be. And by employing these regulations and guidelines, the population of Atlantic striped bass just boomed and 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 has has basically made a full recovery. And we're learning new things all the time about how they can recover. And as a matter of fact, when we employ all these mathematics and population dynamics and try and hit this sustainable catch, it turns out that that really um, the the fish end up doing, or at least in the striped bass case, they end up doing a little bit better than predicted. You know, so they're very resilient, and as long as we're careful with how we harvest them, they'll they'll always be there. Um, so, just two examples of other things that we do to try and keep things sustainable and to remediate species that are that are that are endangered or have already been endangered. Um, and one of those ways is through sanctuaries. So, so actual marine reserves, just like. Uh, just like wildlife refu refuges and parks on, on the continent, we, we set up these reserves and refuges um, off the coast and in, in, in certain certain spots in the ocean. And so there's no fishing allowed in certain certain areas, um, especially if we know that a specific species uh, tends to breed and reproduce there. Uh, and so then a, a commercial or or uh, or um, local fishermen cannot go in and, and 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 target these very sensitive areas and allow allow the species to either recover or or remain sustainable. And the only other one I wanted to mention is is that ver there are various kinds of aquaculture now. So we set up buildings with tanks, or we set up holding holding pens out in nature. Um, ooh, I got the same picture twice there. Um, and then we even we get really really fancy like having these gigantic kind of outdoor pens for for basically growing all different kinds of of species for fisheries all different a whole different arrays of fish but also um, we do this for shellfish we do this for for many different species of the fisheries and so if we're growing um, I mean, we do this for two reasons. One is we can grow them for specifically for harvests, so we're not harvesting from natural populations. Um, so we grow them for the with the intent of of um, of of whatever they're for. If they're most of the time it's for the food industry, it's for a food source, but sometimes it's for other other purposes. And the other reason we do this is to grow them and re-release them into the wild. So we call that stocking, um, and that is to help replenish. Um, you know any any lowered populations uh, and that about wraps it up guys thanks thanks for joining me i hope you had a good course